In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Professor Steinmüller, what's going wrong in Hashimoto's disease? Well, it, that's an autoimmune disease, i.e. Um, the body produces antibodies against the thyroid that leads to an inflammation and this inflammation uh, leads to a hyperactive thyroid in the beginning but then it completely destroys the thyroid and you end up with a very low thyroid function. So depending on the thyroid function you've got different symptoms. So what are the symptoms about with a hyperactive thyroid for example? Well, with a hyperactive thyroid uh, you have too much thyroid hormone and that regulates the whole met metabolism of the body. So you are overactive, you always feel hot, um, you can't sleep, you're very nervous. Um, so you have all the symptoms of hyperactivity. And, and the, the lower activity or the underactivity symptoms are? In the long run you develop a very low uh, thyroid uh, hormone state and that leads to a very depressed metabolism, i.e. you are slow, you are tired, you want to sleep, you always feel cold, your hair um, is getting out so um, you, you feel depressed and you can um, you can uh, uh, treat this by giving thyroid hormones. So given the normal hormones, you, yes. the, the thyroid gland usually produces. That's right. And what are the treatment options for the high functioning thyroid gland? Well, if you have an overreactive thyroid, you give drugs to block the thyroid metabolism in order to uh, bring the thyroid uh, hormone level down to the normal. Uh, and uh, these drugs are toxic. Um, but uh, they help you very much in treating the overactivity. But is giving this medication actually a cure for the disease or do you have to do anything else to cure the, say, Hashimoto? In Hashimoto there is no definite therapy. Um, you don't have to do anything else but regulating the thyroid metabolism. So you either have to block the uh, metabolism or you have to substitute. Apart from that you don't have to do anything and normally you don't have to do an operation. And before you bring the patient into the operation room, and uh, there's another alternative, which is called radioactive iodine therapy. What's this? This is a very good and elegant therapy for uh, hyper-functioning thyroids. Um, you give a capsule with radioactive uh, iodine, 131 iodine, and this uh, iodine gets only um, uh, taken by the thyroid cells, so the overall um, uh, radiation for the body is very, very low. And the thyroid cells uh, take this iodine and destroy themselves. So uh, this is a very um, good and elegant therapy, but it works only in a hyperfunctioning thyroid. And how does it actually work? So you just prescribe the medication and the patient takes it at home or is there something special? No, uh, you go to a special ward. In Germany you have to go to a ward that is closed, you can't even leave it. In many other countries you can just go home after that. And you get a very definite dose of this radioactive iodine and then um, uh, you can also do a scintigraphy. So you can scan the thyroid using this uh, radioactive uh, radiation mm -hmm. and you can see whether it works or not. And when do you actually have to operate? Well, the main reason to operate is a suspicion for cancer. So if you think that there is a malignant nodule in the thyroid, then you usually would have to operate. Other indications are if the thyroid is very, very large, a goiter that is large and uh, you have a compression of the uh, trachea or you have problems to swallow. So in very large thyroids you would perform an operation. And of course also in the hyperfunctioning thyroids where the radioactive, radioactive iodine therapy uh, does not uh, work. Many patients need to be operated on the thyroid gland, but many of my patients are afraid if I tell them they have to go to the surgeon. How dangerous is surgery on the thyroid gland? Well, all operations have risks. 
and therefore it is very important to balance the indication very well with the risks. And of course we always try not to operate. But if it comes to an operation, we can perform these operations very safely today. The typical risks of the operation can usually be avoided and the general risk of any complication is well below 1%. So the normal risk for an operation is major bleeding or infection, but there is some special risk in the thyroid gland. One special risk of thyroid operations is the recurrent nerve. This is a nerve that uh, is important for your speech, for the vocal cords, and this nerve, unfortunately, is directly next to the thyroid. And uh, it is very important uh, to uh, save this nerve. And if you damage the nerve, the patient gets hoarse, or what are the symptoms? Yeah, you have some degree of hoarseness. If you have uh, only a damage on one side, usually this will recover, but uh, you must never have a damage on both sides. So how do you protect the nerve during the surgery? Today we have what we call nerve monitoring. So we can, during the operation, not only visually uh, define the nerve, I always operate with magnifying glasses and I can see the nerve. But this nerve monitor all, uh, also is a function control. So I can stimulate the nerve continuously during the operation and see that the nerve is intact. And that is a very great help. When I find in my, in my office uh, uh, some lumps in the thyroid gland of my patients, the patients usually are afraid that lumps are cancer. So, so what do you have to tell them? Is it always cancer? Well, most nodules uh, in the thyroid are benign. So, um, and if they are small, there is no need for an operation, and in fact, there is no need for a worry. We only operate on nodules that have sim uh, symptoms of uh, cancer, that are suspicious of cancer, uh, and perhaps only 3 to 5 percent of the nodules really are thyroid cancer. And if you want to treat a, um, a benign nodule, can you, can you affect it with some dietary advice? Well, um, the reason for the goiter and for these nodules is usually an iodine deficiency. That develops very often in the childhood. And if, as an adult, you take uh, iodine or thyroid hormone, then this therapy, unfortunately, is very ineffective. So, um, in fact, for goiter, there is no good medical therapy. Um, coming to iodine th therapy, we've got a lot of viewer questions. One is from Vietnam. Le Hi Tong Huang from Vietnam asks if you can actually take too much iodine. Well, iodine, um, uh, uh, is only taken up by the thyroid and uh, you uh, lose it uh, via the urine. So if you uh, take too much iodine and your thyroid is uh, healthy and normal, um, there is no problem. There can be a problem if you have uh, an, an autonomy of the thyroid, so a hyperfunction, uh, a hyperactivity of the thyroid, then you might run into problems. But as a healthy, normal subject with a normal thyroid, you can take as many iodine as you want. Got another viewer question from Ghana, Uluma Nebues, asked something about medication. She's on um, thyroid medication for some weeks and now she's got some side effects. She says she's tired and she's freezing and she wants to know, are they going away, the side effects? Well, um, probably she does not take enough thyroid hormone. It sounds a little bit more like a a low uh, thyroid hormone level. So what she should do, she should see her doctor and he uh, would have to take blood and measure the thyroid hormone level and see whether she needs more. Probably uh, she should take a, little, take a little bit more thyroid hormone. Great advice. Thank you, Professor Steinmüller, for being on this show.